I'm Jennifer with Porcelain, and today we are watching the third installment of the Jackie Sports Bra construction. And today we are going to be constructing the body part. So we're going to be doing um, uh, basically sewing together all of our seams and then doing top stitching if you want. It's not required. Um, I did it. I decided to do it on this one. Um, both the lining and um, the shell have top stitching on it, but you can of course skip that one. So now we're going to assemble these pieces. Now we do have kind of a squared neckline on this piece. So um, we actually need to wait to assemble this seam. Um, we actually have to have this one done first before we can even attach this to there. So let's start on the far right. So we're going to line them up, right sides together. Now we do have a concave and a convex shape that are going together, so it's kind of difficult to figure out. But what you always want to look at is that where that where you're going to be stitching has that overlap. They both line up right at that seam line. And we do have a convex and a concave. So where it is concave, you kind of almost stretch it a little bit, stretch the outside seam allowance a little bit. But what you actually are trying to line up is the seam line itself. So, <clears throat> So it kind of looks like, like the convex looks like it's bubbled a little bit. So you can see how it's a little extra on that side. Um, that's because the seam allowance is actually a little bit bigger than the seam allowance on the other one. So, so this one. And now, um, if you do better with hand basting, so if you are if you struggle a lot with knits that move around on you, I would hand baste them together. Just kind of what we like we did on the strap. It just helps ensure that it goes together perfectly. And then if you have lined everything up correctly, you should also have the same overlap at the bottom, right at that 3 8 I'm losing pins. Hopefully I don't step on that one in just a moment. Cool, so we have those pinned together. We're gonna wait on this one. But we could actually, we can do the side seams. But let's let's assemble these two pieces before we deal with this one. Because anytime you're working with the convex and the concave, it just can be a little bit tricky. Now they're pretty squared at the bottom, so you can actually take and start pinning them together at the bottom. And then if you want, you can line this up kind of at the other end. And here you're going to end up having a little, little tail come out. So where they overlap is what you're looking at. <clears throat> Oops, wrong piece. <laughs> I knew that there was a wrong, wrong piece somewhere. Same idea, I just had the wrong piece lined up. <clears throat> I had that center or the side seam lined up as opposed to the princess seam in the back. And then, so if you're not really sure how to kind of get the convex and the concave to fit, what you do is you try and, we can just stretch them to match. And that should do the correct amount of distri distribution in there. It'll make it so you have one side that looks like it's puckered and one side that looks like it's pulled. <clears throat> the beauty of concave and convex. So you can see right here, yeah. This side looks like it's puckered, and the other side looks like it's pulled. But that's totally normal.
So I've got everything all pinned together and then I'm gonna go over to my overlock. I'm gonna first tackle the seams for the front. And um, I have a lot of pins in here, so keep a pin cushion handy. I'm gonna put my pin cushion on the other side to make it easier. Um, and my stitch, my um, <coughs> overlock stitch is only a quarter, so I need to make sure that I cut off an eighth of an inch. Um, so kind of the same thing, you need to, if you're overlocking, you're doing metric, is a, um, sorry, uh, six millimeter, and we have a 10 millimeter uh, seam allowance. So <coughs> you just want to trim off accordingly. And so sometimes in order to make it kind of, so you don't have that pucker and pull, it might be easier to actually just kind of tug your fabric. Now don't do this on a straight stitch machine because it will give you puckers, um, but you can get away with it on the overlock because it does kind of spring back to your shape. Trying my best to kind of keep them lined up as they go through the machine. sounded a little bit funny before. Um, now what I want to do is right sides together, pin them up, and you'll basically, you'll stop right where your notch is. Um, I don't have the notch on mine. I already explained why. So I'm just going to line, pin these seams up. see a little bit more in the second camera. Looks like we're gonna get a it's gonna rain out there soon. Okay. Now this seam on here um, it probably makes more sense to kind of push that towards that center front piece. And then what I'm going to do is I want to stop sewing. So I'm going to show you right here. I want to stop sewing at just about 3 eighths of an inch or about half an, inch, half an inch. We don't want to sew past 3 eighths so you can sew just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the home machine, the straight stitch, and do a little straight stitch right there. I'm going to quickly go over to the other machine and do my stitch here. I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to sew a straight stitch and then I will be right back over this machine. <coughs> okay, so I have, let's look at this. So you can see from this side, we'll look at this camera. You can see that I did a straight stitch and I think the tension's off on my machine. I'm going to have to go check that. Um, so I've got that little stitch on both sides, and yes, I think I messed up. Something's up with the tension in there. 
but either way it's stopped so we can come back and sew the seam with the overlock but we have to be careful and end the overlock right before that stitch so stop sewing. I'm going to kind of run it right off, right about where that overlock was, or where that straight stitch was. <clears throat> so you can see I've run it off kind of at an angle. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. having it so it's not completely attached all the way up to the top so that way when we go in and do our finished neckline we get a nice crisp edge. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on the lining on my own. So I think I want to do some top stitching on here. Now when you're working with the home machine it can just be a little bit tricky. Um, I went ahead and I did this one here on my industrial and you can see it stretched the seams a little bit. What you want to do is you want to make sure that um, when you do your top stitching is that it doesn't pull the seam. Um, so you really got to be careful. So what I ended up doing is I want to um, kind of do the opposite of the uh, stitching, kind of where the seams are going to go based on the pattern. So for the lining, and you can't see because it's just black on black, I actually have the seam allowance going towards the front. Did I do that? No, <laughs> I goofed on here. So on this side, I have it going towards the front. On this side, I have it going towards the back. Um, and then over here, I have the stitching. I have it kind of going towards um, the side seam. So you can, I don't know if you can see. Zoom in. Zoom in. Hello. Huh? I can see Okay, well, you can change cameras too. That's what I'm trying to put it in front of it. There you go, see? Um, so I've actually put the seam allowance towards this side on here and so we want to try and do the opposite if we're going to do it on the body. You can switch cameras again. Okay. So this one's a little tricky and I probably should have done this one first before um, attaching it but I wasn't sure if I was going to do any top stitching on here um, and you want to test it on some fabric first. Um, the worst thing you can do is um, do something that looks absolutely terrible and have to take it out. Um, and you just have to get used to your machine when you're going to be working with stretch um, and doing this. So don't do a back stitch right here. We can actually pull the thread to the back side. Um, and I'm just going to do kind of stitch right on the edge. Where is this? I feel like it's not down. There it is. And I'm doing a contrast color. And I have actually done this before on some of my bras, and I have had very little snapping of the stitches. And I think we forgot to switch the camera, the audio. Sorry about that, I had to fix the audio. We have two, cam two mics in here. And so you can also use a piece of tissue paper to help evenly feed the fabric through the machine. And so I just kind of did a, a ugly little thing right there. So on this piece, what I can do is just take this thread and kind of give it a yank. And it should be, I should be able to pull both threads to the back side. Um, can't see, I'm not sure where that is. Well, I'll deal with that later. I can get that in there later. Now this one I actually want to push towards the front since the um, lining I did on the other side. And I don't want to go all the way up, but kind of like right near, right about where um, we did that, ended that stitch. 
You just got to be real careful where, where you are here. Why is this not going down? Okay. I want to and you can see it, it's puckering a little bit not too bad is when we have this one underneath it is that the right side nope the other side so when we have this underneath it I want to make it so the seam allowances kind of we split it so there's not as much bulk so the seam lines they line up right here I'm not sure here the other one by the camera you can see that the seam allowances line up right here. Um, is it out of focus? You got to see them more? There. there you go. So um, they're basically, they're offset, so it creates less bulk. If they're all going in the same direction, you're gonna end up with a really big bulk right here. So it's better that you kind of stitch your seams on one side on one of them and then the other side for the other. So I'm gonna continue doing this. I don't actually need to show you all the steps. I just wanted to show you that I was gonna to be top stitching this. Um, and we can go ahead and I'll meet back with you for the next step.